Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another tips video. Today's is a real good one. I want to talk about casting angles. I get a lot of questions from people that want to know what are some of the best casts to make. And honestly, this varies based on the structure. It varies on the conditions of the day. But in my opinion, there are very specific casts that you should make to different types of structure. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through a lot of the primary pieces of structure that we run across on the water and tell you how I like to set up on them in ideal conditions. Now, again, you can't always choose the ideal conditions, and sometimes you got to make the cast that you have in front of you. But if you can make the right cast and the right presentation, you will dramatically increase the number of bites that you get. So that's what I want to talk about today. Before I do get into that, though, I want to remind you, if you want to support the channel, guys, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link to make your tackle purchases. I'll put the link for that in the video description. Also, if you're looking for some help on some of the lakes in your area, I do lake breakdowns through fishthemoment.com. We provide 40 waypoints for a specific season within that lake, a bunch of different techniques and strategies, a great way to get you started on the lakes in your area or a lake you might be going to on vacation. You just want to get a little bit of help. And help like this is why I hope you guys keep coming back to the channel, which is why also if you're not subscribed to the channel, guys, you should hit that subscriber button. It would mean a bunch to me. And I want to talk about casting angles because I get a ton of viewer questions regarding casting angles and, and whether it's important or not. And the honest answer to that is it's crucial. Casting angles are a huge thing in terms of determining the success. Not only may it allow you to get more bites, it may also allow you to get the fish out of the cover. Whereas if you make the wrong cast, you may get the bite, but you're going to lose the fish in a lot of circumstances. So the first thing I want to point out with this though, is your conditions of the day. Uh, whether you have strong wind or you have strong current, you may not be able to position in the correct manner. Now, the one thing I'm going to point out with both wind and natural driven current is that the fish are generally going to be positioned behind a piece of cover looking into that wind driven current or natural current. So having to, you know, knowing that the fish are going to set up a little bit different if you have strong current in these conditions. But let's talk about, say, a lay down. You know, if you've got a lay down coming off the bank, maybe it's got a bunch of branches, maybe it splits off and you've got a big top on the end of it. Generally speaking, a lay down that comes off the, off the bank, the best cast that you can make is going to be parallel to the trunk of the tree. The majority of the fish are going to relate to the trunk of the tree because it's the biggest object and provides the most shade. Plus, anywhere you get a branch that offshoots off that trunk, is going to be a prime target because you have a wider area of, of shade as well as a wider area to you know give the fish an area to hide. You know, as an example, I can't tell you how many times I've I've fished team tournaments where you're coming down the bank, you come up to a lay down, and myself being in the front of the boat, I may make three or four casts at what I would consider the prime uh, interchanges of the trunk of the tree. So maybe you've got a couple of main branches that come off. And that's where I would make the cast. But I, you know, at, because I'm coming at the tree at more of a perpendicular approach, I can't make a cast down the trunk of the tree. But because it's a team event, I pepper it and I keep moving forward. And my partner in the back would make that prime cast. As soon as I get to the point where the boat is equal with a parallel cast, my partner will make a cast down the back and bring that bait right down the trunk of the tree. I cannot tell you the number of times he catches the fish and I didn't catch the fish because I made three or four prime little casts, but he made one cast that he worked for 30 feet along the tree and eventually came in contact with the fish. So if you have the choice, in my opinion, it's always best to make the first cast down the trunk of the tree. Now, it's not always a, you know, an easy way to go about it. If you have current, then from what I would say is you always want to cast on the upstream side of the trunk of the tree rather than downstream side because the, the current will pull your bait into where the fish are at versus away from where the fish are. Uh, so that's a really good example of a prime cast to make. If you're fishing a dock, I can't tell you how important it is to recognize the shade lines on the dock, but if you had to make one cast, the best place, in my opinion, is always going to be wherever the first intersection is from where the dock comes off the bank. Meaning if you have 
Say an L dock, the first interchange is where the L in the, the main walkway of the dock happen. If you have a U-shaped dock and you have a walkway, it's right where the walkway hits the base of the U. You know, it's really a very simple process. It's the fish generally are going to be holding, you know, wherever the shallowest part of the dock is, wherever that first interchange is. Because that interchange is not only going to give them uh, a good ambush location, but it's going to be one of the best places that have the deepest shade line. This isn't always a 100% foolproof thing, but if I was giving one cast, that's where I would make my cast. Maybe the first intersection, you know, and uh, the intersection of the dock isn't even a, a part of the dock. Maybe you've got a straight dock, a straight pole dock that comes off. Halfway out that dock, you have one jet ski, you know, hoist that's connected to it. That's where I'm making my cast. Maybe you have a straight dock, and at the end of it, you have a, a boat hoist on the end of it. That's where I'm making my cast. That's an intersection. It's where you have. The dock meets something. It could be an intersection of the dock itself where you have another branch of the dock that comes off or it could be the first thing that is you know, mounted along the dock. Generally, those are gonna be your best places because they have the most shade and it's the best ambush location for a fish. Uh, let's talk about bluff walls. Bluff walls are a great fish holding piece of cover to target. The thing is, they can be difficult to fish from the standpoint of if you keep your boat away from that object and you try to make a, a perpendicular cast, meaning you're casting straight at the bluff wall, your bait's only going to be along that bluff basically on the first vertical drop. Uh, you definitely can catch fish that way. If you know there's a sweet spot, maybe a little ledge that's down five feet underwater comes out a little bit, that's a fine way to approach it. But if you want to be the most efficient, you should try to perpendicular or parallel fish that bluff. Put the boat right up against it, make your cast along it, and you can keep your bait in the strike zone the whole way back to the boat. And that's going to make you the most efficient way of fishing a bluff. So in that case, you're better, in my opinion, trying to fish as parallel to the bluff as possible. I know that sounds easy, but it's really not as simple and straightforward as it is. It can be hard to make those casts, you know, especially if you're trying to cast with the bluff wall to your right. You don't want to hit it. You might have a little bit of wave action. You're worried about the boat hitting it. But the key here is if you can make those parallel casts on bluff walls, you're generally going to get more bites from that standpoint. The same can be said for fishing like grass lanes. Uh, grass lines. If you have some form of aquatic vegetation, emergent or submergent, generally speaking, you're going to be better off making parallel casts to the edges of that because you can keep your bait in the strike zone for longer. Maybe you got a pad field. You got a big expansive pad field. In my opinion, you're better making parallel casts along the edge of the pad field than making bombs way back into the pad field. Generally speaking, if you don't have any irregularities in the pad field, the first ambush location the fish are going to use is that is that edge of the pad field. Same thing if you've got a deep submerged weed line. You know, if I can fish it where I'm making parallel casts, my bait is going to be in the strike zone for a longer period of time. But having said that, I'm not necessarily talking about making a cast of 75 feet or 100 feet where my bait is perfectly on the edge the whole time because the realistic possibilities of that happening is not real good because you may have a grass line that kind of is jagged, a little points. But if you can get, say, 20 feet of your cast, a quarter of your cast to be working right within a few feet of that edge, you're going to really increase the number of bites versus making a perpendicular cast of that grass line where the strike zone is going to be, you know, a five foot section from where your bait comes out of the grass and comes off the weed line and then goes out into no man's land. So it's important to recognize that a lot of times your cast may only be in the, the, the strike zone for 15, 20 feet, but that's better than it being in the strike zone for five feet when you make a, a, a straight perpendicular cast. If I'm fishing a riprap bank, generally speaking, I like to fish at a 45 degree angle. I'm making my cast at a 45 degree angle because that's going to allow me to bring my bait down the down that riprap and stay in contact for a longer period of time. And again, a lot of times what you'll find with a, a riprap bank is the fish are holding in a certain depth. And by making a 45, I'm able to work my bait through the strike zone for a longer period of time than I would be if I'm perpendicular. If I can get away with fishing parallel on a riprap bank, I'm going to do that. 
But a lot of times I find that you're going to hold your boat off a little and you have you, you generate more bites on that type of bank when you're fishing it at a 45 degree angle. Uh, you know, next up, let's talk about brush piles or any isolated target, you know, like a big boulder. You know, those are all really great pieces of structure that are holding fish. For me, because you've got an isolated co uh, piece of cover on a flat, the key here isn't necessarily the exact angle you make. It has more to do with the distance. I think you're better off making a further cast, say 75 feet to that versus pulling up to being within 30 feet. You want to make a cast without the fish knowing that you're there. And then if I have my choice, I'm going to position a cast where I can keep the boat in deeper water and throw up to that object. Now, if there's current or I have wind blowing in, generally speaking, what I want to do is I want to make a cast where I'm casting up current because the fish are probably sitting in that brush pile or behind a boulder looking into the current. I want to make my cast past it and bring it to them. So it, again, there's a lot of variables here, but if I'm fishing an isolated piece of cover, I generally want to cast into the current, wind-driven or natural current, bring my bait to the fish if I have that choice from a longer distance and ideally where I have the boat in deeper water to prevent from potentially spooking the fish that are holding on that. Uh, maybe you're a river fisherman and you like fishing wing dams or sand drops. In those instances, again, I'm going to try to make a parallel cast. But if I've got a wing dam, which is almost always perpendicular to the shoreline, or to the shoreline, same thing can be said for sand drops. They're generally perpendicular to whatever uh, to whatever the current is doing. Right? You've got current coming downstream. Wing dams are going to be basically at a perpendicular level to what the current is. I'm going to try to position my boat out from that wing dam or that sand drop, make a cast upstream, and it would work my bait back as my bait is being pushed downstream over the sand drop or over the wing dam. Because what I'm doing there is I'm actually allowing my bait to be worked for a portion of the strike zone, which is going to be just above the wing dam or just below the wing dam, for a longer period of time. If I set up directly below the wing dam and throw perpendicular to it, my bait's only coming straight back down, covering a small section of that wing dam. It may only, you know, I'm literally working it right over the top and that's it. If I can be throwing parallel to the wing dam or as much parallel as possible, that bait's going to drift over it, but I'm still working it back towards the boat. So I might cover a 10 foot portion of it, which is a lot more efficient than making one cast that is directly perpendicular. So the key here is, that your, your bait positioning and your casting angles are extremely important no matter what piece of cover you're fishing, but they're different based on the cover and they're different based on the conditions of that specific day. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, I appreciate all you guys watching on a regular basis. And this is a question that I get all the time. So I'm hoping I answered a lot of the questions that I've gotten from viewers. And if you got follow-up questions, please throw it up in the comment section so that I can address that as well. But the key here is you want to make casts that are efficient and effective that keep your bait in the strike zone longer because that's how you're going to generate more bites. And that's something that a lot of anglers don't don't uh, are missing out on. It's just something that they're not paying attention to. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New tip video coming out tomorrow.